Hello Booktube. I'm coming to you in a different location. I live in a shared house and I'm downstairs in the sort of sitting room and there's a table here. And that's the reason why I'm here because there's a nice table. Uh, we might get interrupted, <laughs> so I might have to uh, redo this a few times. Uh, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, I've, over the last year or so, I've received either comments on on uh, videos or emails uh, asking about uh, dust jacket protectors uh, that I use. They're plastic and paper. Um, I'll show you the ones I use. Uh, and uh, it's, it's, it's sort of, there, there are many manufacturers uh, of these and some people swear by specific ones. I've always used uh, Brodart, uh, which is a library um, supplier. And the ones I use are just a fold three, they're called, because they're archival quality. And they have paper backing, as you can see. And they're archival, even though they've, they've got a, a strip of uh, uh, folded over plastic that's glued to the paper, but uh, the paper is archival, and so is the plastic. It's, uh, it's neutral. Now, the reason why I use the backing paper is for twofold. It keeps the jacket sort of away from the book because sometimes uh, there's inks or just the color will deteriorate the jacket. And it's also very helpful when a jacket is falling apart. Uh, it keeps everything, sorry, it's, it's very warm in here. <laughs> uh, it's, it's warm here these days. And my top, my head's cut off because I wanna make sure this is seen in the video. Now I'm gonna, do I got four books here to do three that came yesterday in my book haul but another one while I was looking for something else I found that I thought oh yeah I want to put this in a dust jacket uh, protector and that is Neville shoots on the beach and this is the uh, complete and unabridged film edition and so it's got Gregory Peck and Ava Gardner on the cover and Gregor Peck on the, on the back, but you can see it's, it's, it's not in the greatest of shape. Um, there's foxing on the top edge. Um, the jacket is quite, quite um, rough. Uh, and you can see there's staining, as I was saying, on the inside. And there's chips, and there's a tear at the top. And that this tear, if, it's a good chance that it will just fall off, it'll break. So hence putting it in into, into here. Now, there's a bit of a trick with the, not a trick, but it, it takes a little while and a little finesse. Uh, but you know, the more you do, the better it is. So you lift up the paper, you let it fall back. And as you can see, I'm sort of holding it up and centering it in here because the flaps uh, will over overhang a little bit and I'll talk about that in a moment and I sort of squidge it back and forth to make sure it's fully down and then I hold my fingers on the plastic so that doesn't move and then what I do is I see I hold back with my fingers like I crawl across I flatten it out make sure it's all flat and then I grab the paper and fold it just up to the edge, not fully to the edge, but just like a millimeter from the edge and make sure it's a straight uh, fold, which sometimes is a little difficult, but use your fingers there to flatten it out and then the plastic goes down and then what I do is I pick it up I tap it and make sure you see that it's down near the bottom there and then I turn it on an angle and I get a bone folder this is a mini or a small one I didn't realize it when I got it. I usually get a bigger one uh, this is made out of bone it's got rounded edges pointy it's used in book binding uh, but uh, you can get plastic ones if you don't want bone and then I'd sort of hold it and just, you know, lightly rub to make a good edge. And I do it lightly to begin with, make sure I get the correct size or the, the correct uh, fold. 
I look at it again to make sure if it's okay. Then I press down a little more. And I keep going back and forth a little bit, but I don't press too hard. But I make sure there's a nice, clean fold that's flat. And then again, I tap down. I go back, make sure everything's flat and nothing's moved. Sometimes you have to redo this a little bit, sort of roll out the edge. Then I take the book. First of all, before we put it in, uh, I will talk about it. If the book is, well, this has a bit of a lean, I'll deal with that in a few moments. There's a way of, of correcting that. There's several ways. But you see, there's dust in places. Now, what I use is a makeup brush and just lightly sort of dust off. Now, when I say lightly, because don't use a brush that has hard bristles and then grind it. Because what you're doing is literally grinding the dust into the page edges, which isn't good. Uh, it, this isn't worth a lot, but still, you just I want to keep it in nice shape. So I lightly, and you, you, you go forward like this rather than back because you don't want to get it into the, into the gap there, the spine. And just all the way around, if there's any on the bottom and even on the on the uh, on, well, the boards, this is paper covered. And if there's any writing or anything like that in it, like this one has a, a, a price that somebody had for 10, 10 in it, uh, I paid 25p for it in a charity shop. So I'm going to erase the price and sort of try to rub it out completely as long as it's not uh, written hard. And I use, well, I just use a white eraser. It doesn't matter the, uh, the, uh, the manufacturer. Uh, and I just, yeah, I just use a, a white eraser and, and you probably have one that you, you're familiar with and it works well. So, okay, let's go back to this. But because I let go of this, I want to make sure it's all correct again. And I set this up and let the front board fall. And I get the fold of where the, where the uh, front flap is. And I rub up and down a little bit with the book just to sort of make a, a, a tentative uh, fold there. And then I let this go back down. Make sure it's in there tightly. Not too tight, but just, you know, snug. And then I fold it across. And as I'm doing that, making sure that everything, there's no ripples, bubbles in there. And then I turn it this way and then I fold this up and I turn it over, I lift it up and then I fold it down under. And again, press down and make sure again, there's no ripples or anything. And you see where that tear is, it just closes up and it won't fall out. Uh, there is, you know, when you get chips like that, you will have white in behind. Uh, and with regards to the, uh, excuse me, the sweat. <laughs> with regards to uh, the, the, the type of dust jacket protector, there's ones you can get without the backing, which are nice. They're very easy to do. Um, but... Just like, you know, it depends. Like if you get ones that are not archival, uh, then you run the chance of them shrinking over the time or staining the jacket or the book itself. I don't know how long it would take to do that, but I do find ones that feel kind of rubbery, uh, ones that some libraries use uh, because they're cheap. Uh, after a while, they'll shrink. And then what it does is you'll see the dust jacket all sort of crinkled up because they've shrunk and they've done this. So it is something you got to keep an eye on. Like this has a little bit of like, it doesn't, it doesn't fit perfectly, but um, like perfectly in a sense that, they, you know, it lifts up a little bit, but after a while, or you put a few books onto it, it'll just smooth in and it'll be just a, a perfect fit, tight as a glove. And you also see that it comes, that the dust jack comes a little further over. 
That's the problem with getting pre-made ones. There's, there's these kind that you can get in a roll. So you roll it out, you measure the dust jacket and you cut it to the size or better yet, just a smidgen more. Uh, that's more uh, finicky and I would do that with a book that was very expensive. Uh, there's other ones, uh, there's other manufacturers with, or even, well, the same as Rodar too. They're on a roll, but they're connected, they're sealed in at the top, the paper at the top and the bottom. So you, sl you cut the length and you slide the dust jacket under, under the paper. Then you fold it over. That is a lot more finicky uh, to, to, to use. And these come in, this is eight inch, they come in 8 inch, um, 12 inch, no, 8 inch, 10 inch, 12 inch, 14 inch, and 16 inch. Not too many books you're going to need more than 16 inch. Uh, but yeah, there we go. Uh, that's one done. And now I want to talk about sort of cleaning as well. Like I say, again, with a brush, uh, a, a, a makeup brush is just perfect because it's just lightly. And as I say, don't use like a potato brush or something that you use to scrub the floors because, and, and you know, I've seen that and you just, all you do is just grind the dirt in. Now, uh, another thing is like cleaning. Um, like I'll probably give this a rub down. What do you use? I've seen people use all sorts of things, house cleaners, everything like that, uh, furniture polish. No, no, don't use any of that because that'll leave a residue and it can cause literally the paper to disintegrate or turn brown. Paper has a tendency sometimes to go brown depending on, on the quality of paper, but when you're in introducing other chemicals, there's always a danger. So you try to use something that is sort of uh, neutral. And what I use is isoprofol alcohol. And this is 99.9%. Uh, it's rubbing alcohol, not drinking, rubbing alcohol and it evaporates extremely quickly. I don't generally put it on the uh, book itself. I use a cloth or even uh, paper towels, uh, but paper towels, all these things have other chemicals in, so you're always running the risk of transferring stuff. But this is a glossy uh, cover, and that's the thing, it's best you do it on glossy. Don't do it on buff that's not glossy because that can, because when you go to rub it, it'll probably just disintegrate it and, and rub off the ink and everything. So I put it on here, get it a bit wet, not too wet, but let it soak in and then literally just, just rub it. And it, it, it cleans it as well. If there's any dirt or any glue residue, like if you took off a, uh, a, um, a sticker, uh, I'll get to those that in a second. Um, I'll take it out of here because I want to make sure that it's fully um, dry before I do anything with it. And it just, it, it really dries quickly. It just evaporates very quickly. So it's actually, actually disinfected as well. So we'll put that aside for the moment. Now, as I say, you got a sticker. Try to peel it off without doing anything. And you'll, you'll quickly know whether or not it'll come off. Some stickers are very, very difficult to get out. Uh, alcohol is sometimes very good. It's a propyl alcohol. Try to get the biggest percentage, like 99.9%. Um, and you, you can put a lot on and it generally won't. It's best to do it on, as I say, glossy. If it's buff, like just regular paper, you can have difficulties. You're going to lose some. And regardless of what you do here, sometimes uh, when the sticker, if it's been on for a long time, you might take off a bit of the lamination uh, with it. So you'll have sort of a naked spot. It won't tear the paper. Well, hopefully it won't, but it might sometimes just leave, like it'll be a, a duller spot where the sticker was. Now for really um, sticky stickers, I use, and this is again, uh, this is, and I do caution, the use of the next thing I'm going to say, you have to be very careful with it, is lighter fluid. There are many, many different types of lighter fluid. Um, there's a few that I use. Uh, this was I could get here in the UK is Zippo. Doesn't really matter, except 
what's in it. Because if you get sort of coal or charcoal stuff, don't use that because that will leave residue. This, you can, you can it evaporates very quickly as well. So you can soak it, um, the, the, the sticker. But again, try to use something that is glossy. And it'll you just leave it for a few seconds and then try to peel off the sticker. Now, you have to be careful there because try not to use your fingers. I have a little, a little kit here of tweezers. So if you can, if you can get the edge up, just be very, very delicate um, and then try to peel it off. Sometimes it just falls apart. So sometimes you need to use your hands, but as I say, try to do it underneath uh, something like this uh, material. Uh, this is a, what do they call this? It's a microfiber. I just picked this up. It doesn't actually say, but I think it's microfiber and it's very soft and it's very good to, to wipe. And as you can see, I put quite a bit of alcohol on there and it's pretty well um, uh, di uh, dissipated. So just, and again, lighter fluid. Like Lighter fluid is usually last resort uh, for this. And you can do that a little bit with, with tape as well. Um, tape is always a no-no to me, unless you're using uh, full archival tape because uh, tape will brown, it'll stain, it'll, it'll make the paper brittle, it'll turn it brown, and it'll just fall off anyway. And it shrinks. So it's never good. So it depends on what it is. I, I do always do try to take the tape, the tape off. But um, sometimes I just peel it off and I prefer to have a layer of the paper come with me. But sometimes it's really, really difficult. So that's where I resort to, well, first of all, the alcohol, and then, uh, you know, let it dry. Like, give it 24 hours when you do something like this, if you're putting a lot on before you do anything else with it. Then I moved to the uh, lighter fluid, and then recently, <coughs> excuse me, me forward, I got some of this in sellotape remover, which is just, you know, sticky tape, uh, here in the UK. It doesn't say what's in it. Um... So I'm not sure what's in it. It works okay. Um, I, I've only used it once on, on a book uh, because there was lots of tape on the, on the inside of the dust jacket and it was browning it anyway so I wanted to peel it off but it was like it fragmented the jacket a little bit because it was holding pieces together and so that's really difficult. So it depends on what what it is and how you know, how important the book is uh, to you. But I prefer to take the tape off before I put it into a dust jacket protector. So let's, let's do two more here. Um, this is another one that I got from the book haul yesterday, Shakespeare's Planet. It's a little rough. Um, actually, no, I, I do need to do some cleaning on this because it looks like somebody's written Hopefully, it looks like pencil, but it's it's made a an, an indentation above the uh, the the uh, publisher's thing here. So I'll do that later. This the, the other one should be the civilization game should be dry because it was only just a light rubbing of alcohol. So that sh that should be fully fine. This one's a little bigger than the others. So let's see how this works. Uh, I'm still using eight inch. See, it fits in, the, the width is perfect. So let's slide it back and forth here till we get it uh, in there correctly. And these have perforations along the top. So if you're right at the top, it works out quite well. Uh, I'm going down a little bit, so I'm leaving a little more space there. Uh, and then, and that's a perforation, so it's perfect, perfect fold, and it's straight across. So here we go, it's flat. Get my bone folder again, and rub across. And before I do it fully, and because this one, the jacket's a little more 
it wasn't as flat as the on the beach. So there we go. And always sort of holding it down a little bit, like pulling it, like, you know, with your fingers just to keep it snug on the edge. There you go. And then we do the same with this. Wrap it the right way up. Yep. And then fold the flap in. This one's going to be a little more tighter. Sort of, you know, snug it up into the fold. And then roll it backwards and keep it taut. Press down on it. And then lift up the back board. Slide it in. Roll it like that. There you go. That's nicely done. And the great thing of this too is you can you can read with it, with these on and just be careful, but it you know you won't damage the uh, dust jacket, and you won't leave. Sorry, I'm just dripping with sweat. It is really hot in here. Um, now, as I say, like when you know, like you can't help get unless you're wearing white gloves or something like that, cotton gloves. Uh, you're going to leave probably sometimes finger stains on the, uh, on the, uh, the, 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 uh, the cloth or the board. And every time you take it off, you just have to make sure you set it back correctly. And sometimes the, the book, the jacket gets like that and you can't slide it back down because it's holding it. It's, uh, it's, so you have to lift it out and go the whole process again. But after it's been on for a while that minimizes and it makes it easier. So yeah, so there we go. And um, another thing for repair, as I say, tape is never a good thing unless you're using full archival tape. Uh, glue sometimes is okay, like if the hinge, I think somebody just went out the front door, but I had to pause or do something with it here. Um, glue is sometimes very good. Uh, this is a acid-free glue. It's white glue. It's like LePage's glue is the, the big one that I knew, but that's not, it, it usually goes hard when it's, um, when it's, uh, when it's dried. This stays supple and it can be, Re reversible with water, which is very, very good as well. So if you make a mistake, you can, you can usually get it off. And as long as you're using like, you know, good, clean water, um, you can, you can clean it off. Uh, it's difficult, but it can be done. And then you can use it for hinges, uh, in the book. Um, you know, if there's, if there's an issue there, uh, oh, the other thing I wanted to get back to was, you know, this has a bit of a lean. Now, I always usually forget which way to do this, but, uh, or it's cocked as uh, the technical term is. Now, you can set the book down because it has been open, and you just lightly grab a few of the pages and you keep moving, and you lightly press down, and you go all the way to the front with this. I'll try to do it as quick as possible. And hopefully it'll, and you'll, you'll see what I mean. It will, it should rectify. There's other ways of doing it of, you know, using rubber bands and things like that. But if the book's been read several times, this isn't really going to damage it. it. It'll loosen up the, it, well, the binding's already loose. So, um, and it's not too bad. Let's see how this is after this. Because I, I did it from the uh, back to the front in order to get the, the lean corrected. There we go. See? But if you read this and you go from the front to the back again, it'll probably put the lean back. So that's, that's corrected. So there we go. And I will end it there. Uh, if there's any questions, uh, do sound out in the comments or leave me or send me an email. I've got another book. Uh, I got two other books to do. Uh, again, this is, I'll probably, it's white, I'll use, see this is, 
this isn't glossy, so I would not use even um, the uh, alcohol on that. But I will use an eraser on the white parts. You got to be careful because if you go into color, sometimes if you're a little too vigorous, and I've done that many times, uh, you can get rid of some of the color and make sure you don't like rub a hole right through the through the paper. Sometimes you just have to leave like these stains. I'm just gonna have to, yeah, if you can see that there's, there's two stains. Those will just have to stay. Uh, there's nothing I can do with those. There are things, uh, there are some chemicals that can get rid of or potentially get rid of uh, these brown spots, which are um, uh, foxing, but a lot of them will leave residue and it'll just disintegrate the paper. So, uh, you know, as long as it's, it, it's a lot of times uh, caused by, uh, you know, uneven uh, temperatures and conditions where the books are kept, which can't always be perfect. But anyway, any questions, any concerns, do sound out in the uh, comments below or send me an email. Take care, book two. See you next time.